I'm a firm believer that you need five years to properly assess a draft. There will be many going off about the winners and losers immediately afterward, but the only thing that reveals such facts are time itself. Think of it like the resale market for tickets. It's an inexact science that's intimidating to the untrained eye. But fortunately, they're Seeky, the sponsor of this video to help you out there. Their game plan is simple. By sorting all tickets available on the resale market in the app, it's easy to sift through everything. Go from red to green on a 1 to 10 scale and a view from where you'll be sitting, and tickets are verified for authenticity. I've used it for a couple of Pens games this year, and the ease of use makes it my go-to to buy tickets for games. And don't forget to use the code TREE to save 20 bucks off your first purchase. If only draft picks were as reliable as SeatGeek, it'd make things so much easier. With the first pick in the 2019 NFL Draft, the Arizona Cardinals select Kyler Murray, quarterback, Oklahoma. Meet one of the more polarizing quarterbacks in the NFL. A man who's maligned for everything from a Call of Duty addiction to film study clauses in his contract. Mock him all you want, but he has the talent to steal games. Dazzling athletics and a rocket arm that can make people dream of what could be. That's why Arizona told Chosen Rosen to fuck off after a season for what became nothing. Have the results been anywhere close to the hype? Absolutely not. Flashes of greatness surrounded by messy performances. The disaster of a playoff game, openly clashing with the hideously overmatched Kingsbury, the torn ACL on a non-contact play? It stifled him at this level. And while he's paid to be Arizona's QB for the long term, it might be regrettable. They're locked in holy matrimony for a while to come. The thing is, I wouldn't call Kyler a disappointment. More of a gigantic fucking cock tease. The San Francisco 49ers select Nick Bosa. He the man, Ohio State. Everyone's favorite target on Twitter is not just targeting opposing offenses. He's targeting San Francisco's wallet. He's been so good he was the highest paid player in NFL history at the time of his signing. Which in modern terms is about seven minutes. A complete shit wrecker. One more than worthy of the price of admission. Even on Twitter. Success. The New York Jets select Quinnen Williams, nose tackle, Alabama. Let's just say it was a good thing that the Jets couldn't find anyone to trade down with. If they did, New York wouldn't have stumbled into the best thing to happen to their franchise in a good bit. Williams is a cornerstone of their defense. An all pro who's being paid like it for now and should be with another contract to come. Mike McCagnon's GM tenure was a mess, but at least his final first rounder worked out. Success. The Oakland Raiders select Cleland Farrell, defensive wow. end, Clemson. The Gruden Mayock era needs to be studied in its incompetence. But their continual bungling of the draft despite trading away key pieces to their team is almost an art form. Take Cleland Farrell, expected to be drafted in the mid to late first round? Who gives a shit pick him over nearly every elite talent on defense? Farrell was a project who never developed. To be fair, who could in that shitty situation? The damning part wasn't that he didn't come close to reaching the expectations of a fourth overall pick. It's that they massively reached in the process. This story plays out repeatedly with the New Age Gruden Grinders. Decent depth, but not much more. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Devin White, linebacker, LSU. If it weren't for the past few years, we'd be talking about Devin White as a potential Hall of Famer. His opening campaigns were some of the best for an inside linebacker in the NFL. Second year All-Pro, third year Pro Bowler, an anchor of one of the strongest defenses in football. That 2020 was the stuff of a legend. Then came year four and the wheels started falling off. Turns out he isn't exactly all that good at playing linebacker. Those early runs masked his true weaknesses in the field, and the Bucks slowly realized it gotten so bad that he requested a trade and was healthy scratched in several Bucks games this past year. His stock's as low as it's ever been. Maybe moving to Philadelphia can revive his talents and career, but this grade is more on his first three seasons. And I might be overrating him like most of us do. The New York Giants select Daniel Jones, quarterback. Okay. You know, there's a part of me that feels bad for Daniel Jones. Comes in, quietly does his job, says little, yet it's an endless me. Is it his fault he got picked way too high? That's on Gettleman for seeing three drives in the fucking Senior Bowl. Scouting prowess revealed a massive reach. It's a low-end starter. Even with everything against him, the bad O-lines and weak receiving cores, there just isn't much that teases more upside. 
Sure, you'll mention his 2022 where he helped the G-Men to a strong season and a playoff win. He was a passenger for Saquon. His whole career's been a breakaway run for a touchdown undone by tripping on himself and stumbling to the ground. New York got locked into doubling down on Danny after declining his fifth-year option. They're paying this man $40 million a year. A death sentence that will be mocked to hell and back whenever he isn't running for his life or injured in the process. Just a tragic tale. If you were to look up the definition of mid, Daniel Jones is the example being shown. He's the epitome of... Uh, all right, I guess. The Jacksonville Jaguars select Josh Allen, defensive end, Kentucky. The other Josh Allen was the pick that the Giants should have made, but I doubt Jacksonville's complaining about it all that much. Well, maybe one they'll be paying in the big bucks in the near future, but in terms of on-field performance, he's been an excellent asset for Duvall. One that's coming off his breakout season. Shot, I'd recommend writing a cashier's check so it doesn't bounce. Success. The Detroit Lions select TJ Hawkinson. Tight end, Iowa. You draft a tight end this high, you better hope he pans out. Detroit was trying to clone the Patriots at the time, so they needed the best version of Gronk they could get. Is Hawkinson Gronk? No, but he's still pretty damn good. He's made multiple Pro Bowls. Only thing is that he never really fit into the new Lions regime's plans and was traded to the Vikings. A little further west, he's become a quality asset for their passing attack. And paid like it too. His future in Minnesota is secure. They'll pay Justin Jefferson and they'll be square. Success. The Buffalo Bills select Ed Oliver, defensive tackle, Houston. Another solid pick from the Bean and McDermott administration in Buffalo. Ed Oliver isn't what some were hyping him up to be, but when you're a solid starter like him, you don't really need to hit that kind of high. Barring another cap crunch should be for a good bit. Nothing else to say. Solid value. Success. The Pittsburgh Steelers select Devin Bush, linebacker, Michigan. The inside linebacker for the modern age, we were told. When the Steelers trade up for a player, you know they think he's special. In his rookie year, Devin absolutely was. Dreaming on about his athleticism and talents, the thought was that he'd be the next great defender in Pittsburgh. Until he tore his ACL on a non-contact play. After that moment, he just wasn't the same player. His inability to regain past form exposed dire weaknesses in play recognition and anticipation. The only explosive plays he had were weird posts on Twitter. They gave him plenty of chances, but Pittsburgh gave up on him into his fourth year. Now he's shuffling around the league in a bench spot, probably never to get a full-time job again. I miss Ryan Shazier. The Cincinnati Bengals select Jonah Williams, tackle, Alabama. Things were looking perilous at first, especially with Jonah's rookie year cut down by injury. Things get a bit better from there. Nothing that screams a franchise caliber left tackle, but a solid starter nonetheless. Plus he's versatile, playing both tackle positions and guard. I always felt like the Steelers poached their primary target in Devin Bush, but Jonah did all right here for a bit. Even if he wasn't the true answer Cincinnati was looking for, he'll continue his craft in Arizona and should have a pretty long career. The Green Bay Packers select Rashawn Gary, linebacker, Michigan. Gary's got a lot in common with Hassan Reddick in a way. Both took a few years to really mold into their own at the NFL level. Two years of developing in Green Bay system has created a relatively solid edge. Not elite, but definitely starting caliber. Even with the uh, ACL in year four, I have a feeling that Rashawn's gonna be a staple at Lambeau for a bit to come. It's not really a home run, more of a double. Success. The Miami Dolphins select Christian Wilkins, defensive tackle, Clemson. A man who needs no introduction. Woken started out decently in the NFL and has only gotten better with age. Unfortunately for Miami, he just happened to have his breakout season in a contract year. An interior bull who wrecks offenses is always vital to an operation. The fact that Miami bulk just means that the Raiders threw him all the money to solidify their defensive interior. Oh well, Dolphins loss. The Atlanta Falcons select Chris Lindstrom. Guard, Boston College. This is a tough one to tell, don't you think? One of the best guards in football that's not only made several all-pro teams, but pioneer teams paying interior alignment? Broke the market and will continue to do so. Cornerstone. Success. The Washington 
Washington Redskins select Dwayne Haskins, quarterback, Ohio State. Before I begin, it needs to be said that Haskins died way too young. Terrible tragedy in so many ways and he should still be alive. That being said, I can't give him a pass because of that. The thing is, we already knew his career trajectory. Simon Washington didn't go well. It was disastrous. Poor performances highlighted by rank immaturity. He was given chances, but after a string of mishaps and a benching for a guy on the team for a week, he was cut. It had not even been two years and he was on the fringes. He spent a year as a third stringer in Pittsburgh, but I don't believe he was in the long-term plans. The selection of Pickett, he probably would have been cut in training camp. Would have been interesting to see him in the XFL or USFL, but it was just never meant to be. Rest in peace, Dwayne. The Carolina Panthers select Brian Burns, defensive end, Florida State. A stud and a half. One that could be inconsistent at times, but when he's on, let's just say there's a reason why the Giants threw him a handsome extension this offseason. But Tree, you'll say, he was drafted by the Panthers. You're right. They botched his time here so bad it'll be examined for generations. It wasn't just in the losing. We could have had two firsts and a second rounder from the Rams for him in 2022. Since they were unable to come to terms, he was traded to New York for a pittance. How do you screw this up so badly? The New York Giants select Dexter Lawrence, defensive tackle, Clemson. Wine squirrel finds a nut on accident by occasion. Gettleman wanted a premium defensive lineman to eat up the interior, he got one. He secured one of the best at the position. Sexy Dexy indeed. The Giants have a lot of issues right now. Defensive tackle is not one of them. And with Lawrence, it shouldn't be for a while. The Minnesota Vikings select Garrett Bradbury. Center, North Carolina State. Interior offensive linemen aren't sexy picks, but when they hit, they last for about a decade. I don't know if Bradbury's going to be one of these players, but he is starting caliber. Center was a desperate need for Minnesota at the time, and technically it's been filled. Even if PFF hates his guts, he's a solid run blocker. You just think that the Vikings could have done better here with what was available. They got desperate and reached. So that's part of why Rick Spielman got fired. The Tennessee Titans select Jeffrey Simmons. Defensive tackle, Mississippi State. One word, shit wrecker. Jeffrey Simmons is one of the best defensive tackles in the game. A true difference maker on every play and has gold jacket potential if he can stay healthy. He did fall in the draft due to an ACL tear, but he has stayed off IR for most of his stay. Hopefully that'll continue to be the trend. The Denver Broncos select Noah Fant, tight end, Iowa. Iowa shits out good tight ends like they do corn. Fant is just another product of this machine. He's more or less remembered as a trade chip on the Russell Wilson ride from hell, but he's a quality starter in any system. I wouldn't call him elite, but serviceable. Starting tight end who should be in Seattle for a good bit. Can't really complain about that in this position. The Green Bay Packers select Darnell Savage, defensive back, Maryland. This one's a bit perplexing. There's no doubt that Savage is an NFL caliber player. He is a starter on more than a few teams. His first two seasons were solid. All rookie team nod and four picks in 2020 flashed promise. Then everything just went to shit. He never reached the highs of his early stages in Green Bay. Little morsels of what once was, but mostly nothing but missed tackles. He didn't remember who he was until he had a random pick six in a big moment. Maybe he has more of those in Jacksonville, but this one's just kind of there. The Philadelphia Eagles select Andre Dillard. Tackle, Washington State. Reasoning was sound. The Eagles needed a tackle and Dillard was the best available on the board. All they had to do was trade up to swipe him in the night and it'd be perfect. And it wasn't. Dillard's problem is one that plagues a lot of failed projects. Durability. He couldn't stay on the field. Constant injuries not only hampered his potential, it got him leapfrogged by Jordan Mailata. And when that happened, there was no place for him here. Andre went to start in Tennessee in year five, but the results weren't optimal. A pure disappointment. There's a reason why Howie Roseman was loathed in Philly for a few years. To be fair, he still had a better outcome than his second rounder. 
The Houston Texans select Titus Howard, tackle, wow. Alabama State. To think that this is part of the reason why Brian Gain got thrown off a balcony by the Texans shortly afterward. Being sideswiped by the Eagles forced them into the consolation prize, which somehow ended up working out better for them, albeit not really saying much. Titus is okay. He's not an elite player by any means, but he's okay. He's a guy that can bounce around on the offensive line and fill a role in a pitch. As a full-time starter, though, you can do better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The Oakland Raiders select Josh Jacobs, there it is. running back, Alabama. Pick number two of the Raiders draft frenzy, and a selection given as a result of shipping off Khalil Mack. Jacobs was the best running back on the board in a dire need for them, and he definitely more than filled it in his time here. All you have to do is look at his 2022 season. The Raiders voided his fifth-year option beforehand, and he did so well that they chucked the franchise tag on him. He was good before that moment, but here was his magnum opus. His 2023 campaign was suboptimal, but I argue that's because their quarterback situation was god-awful. Going to Green Bay and getting paid should help out a ton for him. Or so I think. Success. Baltimore Ravens select... Marquise Brown. There it is. There we go. Wide receiver, Oklahoma. Hollywood Brown is a weird case for me. Stats are definitely there for him. He's a quality wideout that's a strong asset to a team. Yet I still feel like he has more to give. Like he's not playing up to his potential for whatever reason. There'd be flashes of something that could make him one of the best in the game, and then he'd just vanish for long periods of time. People would gamble on his talent. Arizona sent a first round pick to Baltimore because of it. But even then, there's mostly been frustration. Maybe working with Mahomes on a prove-it deal helps, but still, I want to see more. Even then, I'm nitpicking, it's still a decent pick. Success. The Washington Redskins select Montez Sweat, linebacker, Mississippi State. We were robbed of an elite defensive line in Washington. Be it from injuries or the team being a shithole, the final first rounder of the Redskins era was a solid one, but couldn't fix the litany of issues around the franchise. The rebranded commies knew it, and with impending free agency, was dangled for a second rounder at the deadline. It was weird that the Bears traded for him of all teams, but it seems to be paying off. He found both money and life in Chicago. And you could argue his addition near single-handedly bolstered their defense in the second half of last year. At this point, he's well on his way to becoming a Bears fan favorite. Success. The Oakland Raiders select Jonathan Abram, defensive back. Mississippi State. The third first rounder of the debut Gruden Mayock draft did not have the same fate as Josh Jacobs. Abrams just kind of there. Decent depth, but if he's your starter, you're in serious trouble. Same reason why the Raiders defense was pretty bad for a number of years. He was cut in year four and now bounces around in the abyss of free agency shuffle. And there's a reason why this is a trend with the Raiders in this time. The Los Angeles Chargers select Jerry Tillery. Defensive tackle, Notre Dame. All I'm gonna say about Tillery is this. When a defensive tackle is cut from a team that desperately needs anyone that can breathe at that position, you've done something terribly wrong. The only thing anything thinks of when Jerry's name is mentioned is propensity for cheap shots. He's hanging on as a backup, but it's simply another strike on the Telesco regime. They opened the door and they got the dud. The Seattle Seahawks select L.J. Collier, defensive end, TCU. Seattle and trading down. Name a more consistent combination. Wait, that was the next pick. This selection was for trading a pissed off Frank Clark to the Chiefs. Let's just say that Collier didn't have the impact that Clark did in Seattle. He was a one-year starter and left little to be inspired about in the process. Fifth-year option declined, off to Arizona to rebuild his stock. God. Played all of one game last year. He was injured for the rest of it. At this point, he's back up caliber. If you squint, he might be the 2023 version of Frank Clark. The New York Giants select DeAndre Baker, defensive back, Georgia. The third shot at Dave Gettleman rolling the dice at greatness. Here he managed to trade up with Seattle to do so. And it blew up in his face. If we're counting arrests for armed robbery that were eventually dropped, Baker was a great. His philandering with criminality pushed him off the Giants in a year. But he did join up with the Chiefs afterwards. And did nothing. Out of the NFL for a few years? Welcome to the UFL, buddy. 
The Atlanta Falcons select Caleb McGarry. Tackle, Washington. Gary's a cog to one of the more underrated offensive lines in football. He's not Chris Lindstrom good, but as a quality tackle who's been extended, you can't ask for anything more out of him. If it means anything, he's one of the best tackles taken in the draft. It's either him or Jawan Taylor. The New England Patriots select Nikhil Harry, wide receiver, Arizona State. If there's one major demerit to the hoodies reign, it's his botching of skill position assessment. Nikhil is the most damning of the bunch. Ineffective and cast off to the abyss within three years. Somehow lingering as a special teamer, but way off the mark as a passing target. Patriots fans, do yourself a huge favor and don't look at the receivers picked after him. Ugh. Oh, God. Shield your eyes, New England. It's awful. Just awful. An absolute waste. I'd say that was a relatively successful first round. Ran out of gas at the end, but a lot of players seen as some of the best at their positions. In hindsight, this was a draft full of game changers and playmakers aplenty. And most of that is at wide receiver. When you start this sentence with Debo Samuel, you know it's a damn good class. After him, there's another elite talent in A.J. Brown. He's thriving with the Eagles these days. D.K. Metcalf was passed on by many due to fears of Mike Mamula syndrome. Those fears were terribly overblown. Even ignoring them, you'll find quality assets like McCole Hardman, Deontay Johnson, and the underrated Terry McLaurin. Even Hunter Renfro and Darius Slayton have had their moments. But let's not forget the best of the bunch. J.J. Arthega Whiteside, a true treasure. The rest of the second round is solid value throughout. From quality secondary help like Byron Murphy, Sean Murphy, Bunting, Taylor Rapp, and Juan Thornhill to strong linemen like Jawan Taylor, Elton Jenkins, and Eric McCoy. And the fluid running on Miles Sanders for good measure. Speaking of running backs, the third round brings us their power. David Montgomery, selected by the Bears, is the first of this crop. Immediately after him, Devin Singletary is taken by Buffalo. You still have Daryl Henderson, Damian Harris, and Alex Madison. On the defensive side, you have the likes of Zach Allen, Draymond Jones, Jermaine Pratt, and Bobby Okereke. Quincy Williams has also thrived with the Jets. There's just so much depth in this round, I can't possibly go over it all. Just a very, very solid day two. The start of day three gives the Raiders a blessing. They did get their premium edge rusher, but it wasn't Cleland Furl. It was Max Crosby, an elite asset on a potential Hall of Fame trajectory. Tony Pollard isn't what I'd call a gold jacket running back, but he's still really damn good. The rest of the round offers up pieces like Chauncey Gardner-Johnson, Amani Hooker, Ben Powers, and Drew Tranquil. In the fifth round, San Francisco secured the services of Dre Greenlaw, an excellent foil to Fred Warner. I hope he recovers from his Achilles tear fully. Andrew Van Ginkle was also selected in this round. He's really come into his own the last few years. Matt Gay and his kicking, Mac Wilson, Blake Cashman, and Cole Holcomb are other notable players selected here. The sixth round offers us the great meme quarterback of our time. Gardner Minshew and his journeyman starter magic were introduced to us by Jacksonville. The rest of the round features David Long, Marcus Epps, and Donovan Wilson, so it starts to thin out here. Round number seven doesn't give us too much. Mainly depth like Nick Allegretti, Caden Ellis, and Nick Scott. Mr. Irrelevant? That would be tight end Caleb Wilson. He had a brief stint with Philly in the NFL. But being undrafted doesn't mean you won't have success. Pro bowlers like Avante Turpin are proof of that. Deontay Hardy has also made a Pro Bowl in his time with the Saints. Same goes for the fullback Alec Ingold and punters A.J. Cole and Jack Fox. Think of Yosh Nyman, Aziz Al Shair, Jacoby Myers, T.J. Edwards, Carl Granderson. There's quality to be found wherever you look. And that is the 2019 draft in all of its glory. Be ready. The 2020 draft gets fucky. Very, very fucky. Two years ago, when I retired from the Colts, I retired alongside two greats, Robert Mathis and Joe Wright. A couple months later, I watched the draft. Robert Mathis announced the pick, Joe Wright announced the pick, and then an orangutan announced the fourth round draft pick. I was replaced by a zoo animal.